All right, hello and welcome to Stampscapes Friday Night Live. I haven't used a piece of the holographic cardstock in quite some time. This one can be really quite dynamic. It was, this one I'm pretty sure is by Chrome Code. It's a really old um, version of this cardstock. And when I first started using it about two years ago, you can find it in a couple places. It was sold in packs by um, a couple different manufacturers. They weren't the manufacturer, but they were reselling it. And um, you can find it on places like Etsy. So it was it was tough to come by, um, which was a surprise to me because there were a lot of different versions of this, I believe, about, I don't know, 10 years ago going back, but there's less of a choice these days um, just because the printing industry is so much smaller. But anyway, okay, what I'm getting at is I think you can find this a lot easier these days, and I think it's still around, or it has re-emerged, okay? So remember, this is not the printable vinyl sticker paper, which is really cool too, okay? This one is a little bit less saturated because it has a coating of, I believe it's emulsion or something like that, that makes it possible to print on, okay? But just looking at it like this, you can kind of tell the difference, okay? This is just bare um, paper and so is this one right here. So this one is a little bit more dynamic, but you're going to have to spray seal the media once you lay it down on here, unless you're just going with only um, something like a stays on ink, okay? Okay, but that being said, something like a printable vinyl sticker paper, when you lay the media down on there, it really grabs it because that's the way it's designed. It has to be able to grab your printer inks coming out of your inkjet printer and to um, dry them reasonably quick, okay? As opposed to this type of paper right here, again, um, kind of a specialized surface and uh, uh, the media that we use in crafting kind of you have to um, spray fix it so something like a Krylon UV resistant clear that's what I typically use you can use a Krylon crystal clear other types of spray sealants okay but it might get a little bit more of a frosted look to it once you spray seal it um, happens sometimes sometimes it doesn't it depends on how um, thick a coating you put down on there Okay, so I'm going to try something with uh, uh, like an Aurora Borealis type of thing, a Northern Lights type of thing on here. Um, it's one of the things that I really like doing on here. I thought I would go with the Fire Lookout Tower and uh, some rocks down here, maybe some foreground trees or something like that. Hello, Linda. Hello, anyone else that's on? Great to see you. Um... I am back in town for a couple days, and then next week I'm off to Mesa, Arizona for possibly my last convention that I'm doing, because uh, the guy that I usually do the uh, shows with, he's going to make it, or he's been saying it's probably his last show, so, um, yeah. Anyway, that being said, all right, the media that I'll be using on here is the Brilliance, white, and black, okay? And those brilliance inks are a water-based pigment ink that's um, reasonably fast drying, as far as pigment inks go, okay? It's not like a stays on ink or something like that. They're not going to stick to this, um, but they will dry on this. And again, you can spray, uh, fix them down to the surface um, I would do it after they're dry. You might be able to spray it while they're still wet. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, so, um, okay, so going back to that whole idea of, of um, like an emulsion coated um, uh, surface like the printable vinyls right here, when you stamp something down them, it really grabs them and uh, you can't really move your media around on there. Um, as far as I know, there might be something that you can move around on there. Um, but the inks, as far as inks go, they're pretty well set, okay? But that being said, if you want to do a little bit of blending on your surface, then this is the one, okay? And using that, one of my stamps just fell off uh, the table somewhere. Um, if you want to do some blending, this is a good one to do that with. 
Okay, so if you haven't done this before, it feels really weird because we're not used to typically in stamping working with a bunch of media that's just kind of floating on the surface and you know you can manipulate it for a long time after it's been laid down. So you're working with kind of a wet media that's just sitting on there, you know, for the time that you're working on it, you know, unless you're working on something for hours and hours, maybe it dries, but usually not. Um, so, um, but that being said, it's really fun to work with because if you get anything that you don't like on there, you can just wipe it right off and start over again um, on here. You can even do it like after the media dries on here, this brilliant ink. It's like you don't like something or you don't like a section of it. You can take a, I would take like a cotton ball and just mop it off. And then you just reapply, you know. Uh, you, you can really get it down however you want. Or you can just practice your media application. Okay, I'm blapping on here too long. Uh, hello, Ginger. Good to see you. Patty, hello. And Jeannie, hello. Hope everyone had a good week. My hands are all beat up from uh, doing uh, a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of labor. Okay, so I'm going to give this. Um, I I don't even remember my process here too much um, or completely. I'm going to try to um, lay down some blocking out tone on here. Okay, where my rock is going to go because I don't necessarily want too much of that surface to be showing through what should be um, a solid object down there, okay? I, I don't mind if some of this, sh you know, this patterning shows through. Inevitably, it's going to be, because I don't think I can get, you know, a super thick layer of this down. I don't know, maybe I can. Um, but a little bit would be fine. You know, it would be like these colors reflecting off of a rock or something like that. But I don't want my rock to just look absolutely transparent and that's where this white comes in so you can see where it's kind of blocking it off like that all right i haven't done it feels like i haven't done this for a while but uh, it's coming back to me a little bit so one of the things i used to say is you don't have to get this you know this laid out um, perfectly smooth um, when you're doing this because we're going to be stamping an object right over the top of that and kind of this application irregularity. You know, it could be kind of blobby. I think it's going on pretty good here. <laughs> but if it doesn't, it just looks like different kind of intensities of lighting are hitting it, you know, which is good to have variation on there, so. And it's kind of hard to see, like I'm looking at it like at an angle, so for, to me it kind of looks like, I don't know, let me see if I can give you an example, like that, see like that? I'm looking at it like this, so it's kind of hard for me to see, I get this, light kind of reflecting back at my eyes so it's it's kind of interesting working with these uh real um reflective types of services where you get that uh light kind of coming back at you so for me i have you know it's like going out on a lake or ocean or something like that where you have the light coming from above and then it's reflecting off of the surface back at your face so um it can, it, can, it can be interesting when you're doing this type of thing as far as your, uh, I don't know, whatever your uh, focus um, is. All right, so I'm going for a little bit of a slope right here. I want to have a, you know, you can make it perfectly level like that, but I think it's going to be more interesting to have this lookout tower um kind of a little bit of a slope you know what i mean like a you know whatever the apex of a you know that mountain is or you know something like that so let's do like that right there okay all right um i'm wondering to myself if i should um stamp out my rock over the top of this in the stays on or brilliance ink i think i better go for the brilliance just because it's thicker um are there any other shows you could join any still around uh 
There probably are, but um, I haven't done them. There's there's scrapbooking shows, and I typically haven't done more of the scrapbooking based shows before. I, I've I've attended them, just you know, kind of walking around. But uh, this is years ago, and it occurred to me I, I don't think um, the line would be kind of real conducive for that, um, you know, for those shows. Um, let me go a little bit higher with this. I need a little bit more space, I think, down below. I want to add some trees down here, so I want to add a little bit more space where I can add them at different heights here. And But this is a real elongated um, half page uh, piece right here, so let's go a little bit higher. Let's, uh, let's emphasize things a little bit more. Uh, but one of the reasons why I do these other shows um, with this uh, other manufacturers, he's the one that makes my stamps, and um, he has the entire booth set up. I, I used to have a booth set up, but I've gotten rid of a lot of the things that um, you know you would use in a show setting, like cash registers and stuff like that, those um, credit card readers and all that type of thing. Um, you know, I just haven't uh, had those types of things when I stopped doing um, shows on a regular basis. So lighting, electrical, you know what I mean? You had to have kind of backups for everything when you're doing these shows. Um, and it's, uh, it's all those little things like that, you know. If you're, you know, the systems go down, you got to have like, you know handwritten invoice booklets and stuff like that um and uh, that's all the type of stuff that i got rid of a long time ago okay let's see let's that but i don't know who knows right. um let's just say i don't we'll see how the show goes for him <laughs> Show the shows are tough though Shows are tough if you're if you're traveling a decent distance to them. Like I'm getting up at like 4 a.m. or like I'm on the road at 4 a.m. to drive up uh, about you know an hour and a half to you know this uh, this guy's place, and then from there we drive to you know Arizona. And uh, let's go about like that. And then from there, I don't know how long it is, five and a half hours or something like that, five hours. And then once you get there, um, you're setting up the show and that takes about three or four hours. So I don't know what time that is. It depends, I, I think we're changing by an hour sometimes. Arizona doesn't change um, due to daylight savings. So um, after you set up the booth, eh, I don't know. I forgot what we do. Go out to, oh, I think we check into a hotel or something like that, and then we're usually going out to eat. <laughs> I mean, they're fun to do, though, you know, once you get it all set up, and it's, uh, I always say I would do more shows if they had that uh, Star Trek transporter um, invented, where you can just transport over there. I, I don't think those are available yet, though. All right, we're gonna overlap by about this much. I wiped off right in here where it's going to be merging in with this one a little bit, but I am going to overlap by about, I don't know, it's like an inch or so, okay? So just adequately overlap, okay? And then kind of hold this down for a little bit and allow that wet ink to transfer there. Hello, Bugs. Hello, Yvonne. Yeah, RSM's a good uh, source for that. I think 
rubber stamp mandis might even have that on their website um, as well. Hello, Sandy. Okay, hey, this is stamping out pretty good. I, I couldn't remember how um, the Brilliance ink stamped into a wet, white, you know, Brilliance ink. So pretty decent. All right, so I'm gonna put some trees down here. I'm thinking of, I'm gonna just use this as my second impression here. Cause I, I was thinking I would just leave it white, you know, just so it, I don't get too much um, texturing down there. Okay, but let's go with a little bit of it and just go. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. Those impressions, the base of it right here is going to go about maybe a half inch up in here. There might be a lot of ink on there still, I don't know, because you know this is not absorbing any of the ink that's been laid down here, okay? So you see how light it is like that? So when I put those other trees in here, um, there'll be a little bit um, more contrast between those foreground trees and those rocks laid down there. That's just one of those little subtle things um, that you can do, you know, so you can see the silhouette the shape of the side of the tree in this area a little bit easier. Okay, now if I wasn't gonna put anything down there, I would do the same, um, these rocks the same value as those ones up top there and like that. But I think that looks pretty good. That, that white blocked out um, better than I thought it would. I thought it would be a little bit more translucent. Let me see. I've seen it. Yeah, you, you can. Okay, so you can see that. You can see. You can clearly see that color showing through those rocks like that. But, but it's not bad. I think it'll become a little bit more see-through um, as it dries. But it's okay to have some of this color down here because this light would be reflecting off of the surfaces of things, anyways. So, um, you know, you'd, you'd have that in there. Okay, now let's see that this. We'll go about right here, okay. Now sometimes what I used to do is I used to put this little cloud formation in the background so that you can stamp over the top of it like that, but I'm just gonna leave that as is. Oh, okay. So before I do this, <laughs> I'm gonna get those kind of those um, Northern Lights style of curtain-y types of things coming down on this. I, and that's the main point of this one. So if I stamp this right now and I do those curtains down here, this is kind of going to be in the way and it's going to be wet. Okay. So I think I better do those curtain-y types of things first, you know, and then I'll stamp this right over the top of it, you know, and pray that I don't screw up after having done all this and that top part. <laughs> okay. So this is the part where, um, it gets a little kind of weird, you know, in terms of a process because we're used to doing like straight applications of things. We apply whatever media onto our paper and we're not really doing so much of a subtractive type of process, okay? Especially if it involves doing it like maybe two or three um, cycles. So I think I'm gonna be adding some ink down and then removing some and then adding more ink down and then removing until I get kind of the, the look that I'm going for. I never get it with one, um, you know, whatever cycle or whatever. I, I never get it the first time because it's not the look that I'm going after. I'll show you what I mean by this if you haven't seen this before, okay? All right, so wet ink on this. It's almost like you're applying it on a piece of plastic or something like that. Yeah, uh, I have this uh, client in uh, the United Kingdom, and they're doing shows all the time. But um, they said that their the shows, you know what I mean, they're local shows, or they don't have to drive too far. They're not driving like, you know, five or six hours away or something like that, and having to stay overnight. Um, at, at least not to a lot of them. But I was thinking, yeah, that would be kind of nice, you know. Um, which the only time that happened for me. Um, was for the uh, Carson convention, the, uh, they call it the original rubber stamp convention. 
Okay, so this is what I'm doing here. I'm going for these kind of curtainy types of things. So we're going to have these kind of fingery types of things going up there. So what you want to do is you're defining those kind of curtains by the negative space in here. So while you're doing this application, it's really about the retention of these other areas in here. Um, kind of, you know, kind of being left alone, kind of. Um, um, because we can, remember, we can do a subtractive mark on here. So I, I, I overdo this a little bit because I know that I'm going to come back through here with the uh, subtractive process. So that's, that's a little bit different for people too. We're usually um, trying to apply, um, including myself, you know, we're, we're trying to apply the amount of media that it's going to take to um, achieve something, some look or whatever. And on this one, you're applying more with the anticipation of removal. Okay, so here we go. And I, what I'm doing is I'm doing this thing right here. This is what I'm doing with just about every type of media that I'm ever doing when I'm doing color application, be it pencils or something, but I'm trying to do this transition like this, okay, from darker to lighter like that. And it's doing that kind of gestural mark like that, okay? You want that tail on there. You don't want to go like that and then up, okay, like a straight thing and then up because you get that hard edge on the edge like that. Now, if you do that on this, you know, like I said, you can just wipe it off and, you know, do something like that. But I'd rather get it, you know, a little bit closer at least, you know, with the actual stroke like that. So you get that kind of feathering um, type of application down there. But you can see, I mean, it's really thin right there because we're wiping in here. But as you wipe in there like that, if you go a little bit harder or if you go over the top of it, you're really subtracting. So... Um, I don't know, it, it's just a matter of getting a, you know, a, a feel of it. And any place you touch this on here, if I touch that right there, you can, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of removed it. There's not very much there, but you can see where my finger, you know, just removed that ink. So be careful that you're not touching down here. <laughs> Inevitably, I'm kind of always kind of, um, going back and I'm touching up areas that I've, you know, held down my paper on the side. I should be holding it with something else, but... I don't like to tape it down either or something like that because I'm always kind of moving it around, you know, to get the right angle for these. I remember the time... Um, have any of you ever, um, you know, looked at Rubber Stamp Madness or whatever, you know, the list of vendors, and when you've traveled, like on vacation somewhere, <laughs> you've looked to see if there are any um, stamp stores in that area, and then you've gone and checked them out. That used to be, you know, one of those things when people were just, you know, going on vacation wherever, They'd always look to see um, what stamp stores were in the area. And, uh, you know, they'd, I don't know, whatever, chart them out and go to them. Going to Las Vegas, you know, there's you going to Stamp Oasis, uh, Viva Las Vegas stamps, and what was that other one out there? There were like three or four just, you know, rubber stamp specific stores out there, you know, as, as an example. Las Vegas art stamps, yeah. That one's easy for me because they're all kind of really close to each other, r relatively speaking. Okay, but see what I'm kind of getting at right here? Those are those curtains. Now see, that's, you know, that's kind of awkward, but it's easier to get a nice graceful thing when I'm doing more of a subtractive mark coming up into there, okay? Oh yeah, I gotta remember that that tower is going to be in here somewhere. But see, if you wipe like this, okay, see it, I can, you can really build up like that. But then if you wipe like that, 
you're wiping it off. Okay. So it's like, for me, it's a combination of kind of doing both. Now I want to kind of frame off the scene a little bit or frame it off a lot. So I want to really get a kind of a nice vignette going around here. It's awkward though, because see those little blobby marks like that, you know, doing it. I mean, you know, you can condense it like this where you can build it up more like this. Bill, you know, I wouldn't mind going to places, but don't much care for the windshield time. <laughs> Almost ready to transport myself off to bed. Got it. Well, if you do, sleep well. <laughs> Okay, now I have to be careful about this. I'm, I'm shading these rocks, but if I tap too hard, or if I do this type of application, it's going to wipe off those rocks. Now those rocks, the ink is kind of setting up, and while it's not real permanent, if I just ran my finger right through, they would just wipe it right off. But you can um, build up you know, some tone, so I'm just using a lighter touch. I'm probably removing some of the ink, but um, with the amount of pressure I'm using, I'm applying more than I am removing. Okay. So I don't know if it would have came off more if I did that five minutes ago. I'm not sure, but like I said, it, it does start setting up right here. looks like this is my location to hold my paper now. Okay. I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to kind of bisect this rock. This is what I often do. If I have a large area of rock or just air, some something, okay, that's lighter like that, what I do is I bisect it. So it's a, if it's a big body of water, this would be interesting if I stamp the Lakeside Cove up here too or some, I mean, I have these lights coming in this way, but you know, you can have something in the distance like that. But anyways, what I'm getting at is anytime I have a large area sky, water, whatever, rocks of a similar texture like this. I just bisect it like that with a little bit of tone. Okay, so what I what that looks like right here is it's this right here, right? So I'm coming into it like this and then it tapers off like that. Okay, I don't want it real hard just like I don't want it real hard like that either. So um, so if you think about it in terms of an application of media or something like that, it's just the exact same thing. I'm just doing it this at a different angle than up here. On up here, it's more of a streak. Um, when I'm doing it here, because I want that retention of those forms, I'm going like this. So it's a little bit darker on the edge like that. And then you go like that. Okay. So it's just like tapered thing, dark to light. This is dark to light. Yeah. Um, if it's a body of water and it's horizontal, then you go dark to light, you know, from the sides, dark to light like that. In this one case, this, the, the, you know, the Aurora Borealis, you know, Northern Light type of thing is usually, I think it's the only time I go vertical with a dark to light streak like that. Hello, Bonnie. Did I say that already? Good to see ya. I did well in Canada this year. They had a, a lot of what we, uh, they had a lot of what we have at home. Got it. Um, there were some areas, boy, at some point in, in time, uh, as far as the stamping industry went, if you went to certain regions, there were a pretty decent amount of stores in certain areas. Um, uh, Wisconsin, or if you're in uh, Canada, it was in Canada, I think it was Ontario that had uh, a lot of stores. Wisconsin, um, and maybe Minnesota in those Twin City areas. Um, definitely Colorado, though, in the Denver area. Aurora, and um, 
I think Denver itself, I don't know too much in Denver, um, the city of Denver, but it was all those little towns right in there. Maybe not all at the same time, but a lot of them were there at the same time. We can do a lot of, uh, you know, store hopping, I guess. Um, sometimes when people would take, um, go on like a tour, they some places took like tour buses, like a store would charter a bus from, I don't know, whatever, LA or something like that. And they would go to the Las Vegas, um, convention and what they would do is uh that would be like on a s friday and there might be a friday night preview night um at the hotel that the convention was at saturday show and then on sunday before everyone left town they would go they would take that bus over to like three stores or four stores in the vegas um area and visit them for about like an hour or something like that fun times huh as far as uh you know those types of things went okay so that's going in there i'm getting a little bit kind of blobby around in these areas but um that's the way it looks i would kind of come down here a little bit more but i'm not sure um if i want to do that my Aurora Borealises tend to be more this more horizon-based thing, okay? Now, normally, you would have it dark underneath there, and you'd have this kind of this curtain-y type of thing going through the air like that. But the thing is, if I darken this area down here, when, you, when you're when you stamping objects down here, trees or something like that, if you have dark against dark, you know what I mean? You, your objects don't stand out as much. Like in this case, it'll be the fire lookout tower, right? So if I have this darker area down here, you're not seeing the silhouette of these forms very well. So I always leave things lighter down here so that we can, you know, we can stamp our objects or, you know, our stamped imagery. Now, if I'm just doing something where it's just, yeah, you know, there's not going to be anything up there. It's just like a, you know, we're looking up at the sky. I guess I can do this type of technique, uh, you know, with without any you know, regards to anything being, you know, you know, applied over the front of it, you know, so I would do, you know, I'd do that more curtainy type of thing, but on this one's more of this horizon glow. And I just do these, my beams kind of coming from above. So whatever, art artistic, uh, you know, license and uh, out of necessity, you know, um, all right, so, okay, so I'm looking at these beams here, these curtains, and um, it's not looking too bad here. I think I'm going to alter it a little bit just to see if I can get it a little bit better, but I do like that. Oh, I love that color that's reflecting right now, that bluish tinge like that. It almost looks like it's underwater, doesn't it? Um, okay, so what I'm getting at is I like it pretty good here but I want to get in a little bit of practice time in here too getting these things more kind of graceful as um, you know whatever little strips of light so I'm applying a little bit more in here so that I have space to do these you know these little I don't know what you would call it wisps or something like that Okay, but here it goes. See that bisection like that? So you have light, dark, and light down there like that. So, you know, it's just one of those subtle things again. You, if I have too much of a space, I just break it in half. You know, I've talked about checkerboarding before on this uh, channel a lot. Um, okay. All right. Hmm. All right. So that's, I think, what I want there. 
as I, I think, because I haven't done this for a while. Okay, so I have this paintbrush right here, okay? Um, it's not specific to this one, it's just, I don't know. I, I have a, like a handful of paint brushes, and I find this one works pretty good. So it's it's a little bit soft, okay? It's not super stiff. I think super stiff might be a little bit um, scratchy on here, but I don't know, you can use whatever you want. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these sweeps coming up like this into these areas, but then you get this ink buildup on here, and then if you go down here again, it's like you're applying the ink, and I want to do more of a removal, a subtractive process on here. So what you do is you just, I don't know, you can think of it like, I don't know, like you're removing powder or something like that, or you're sweeping, you know, imagine you're sweeping like this is like, I don't know what it would be. I was going to say sand, you know, soot. Okay, how about we're sweeping soot off of something, okay? So you can think about it in the spirit of that. And we're using like a whisk broom, not like a push broom, you know, where we're going like this and then up, okay? So you want to do use more of like this sweeping motion like that, okay? So it's coming into contact like that, okay? And this is going to hit like right before the darker area like that. Okay, so this is what it looked like, like this, okay? See, this is where you get that more curtainy. Let me see if I get, let me do it on one and then we'll compare it to one of these other ones over here. And then see, I'm coming up into this one a little bit too. I'm trying to, I'm going like at a little bit of an angle. I want these more vertical, so let's see. Maybe hold this more vertical like that. There we go. And see, I, I, this is, you know, right side up. I don't find this to be a real natural ergonomic motion where this, you know, is. You're just going like this, okay? Like this. We do this more than like that. I mean, you could, you know, if you want to, but just find whatever is more comfortable for you. And then this, see, you just change it at the angle that's going to be nice and conducive for the mark that you're doing. So, you know, I don't know, play around with it and find whatever is most comfortable for you. Okay, so let's see right here. Okay, let's see if there's any difference between this one. And you can see that right up there. And see, this one's a little bit chunky right there, right? Can you see that? Now, I, I need to do this one more, okay? But that's that's how it looks, right? Okay, I'm going to go a little bit with more force here. Maybe that was too much, I don't know. Okay, now remember, I'm doing an additive in a subtractive process, and I'm going to add more of the ink right over the top of this, too, okay? But see, that's just what I'm getting at right here. There's that kind of that streaky look like that, but um, kind of in a reverse like that. So I want to taper that off a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more black ink over the top of that so that it's not so stark of a scratch like that. Oh, the black ice technique, yeah. That's a cool technique. Okay, let me see here. That's the black ice technique. This is the black light technique. No. <laughs> I'm getting a kind of, you know, the more you do this, you get kind of the more the feel of it. 
I don't know if, uh, you know, the paintbrush is, you know, the perfect thing for this. There may, may be other things that are better. I don't know. Kind of anything kind of, uh, you know, maybe you want to get, you can go for a, maybe a bolder type of um, look using something else. This, this for me kind of, it goes, you know, fairly, um, it's fairly controlled because this is this is really soft. So even if even when I press hard, you know what I mean. This is still kind of flexible, so I, I don't get too much of a stark um, removal. I guess I mean I guess I could if I really kind of lay down with it, you know, hard like that, and make that stroke. But um, yeah, I think this works decently. All right, so this is what we're going at right there. Okay, it looks a little bit kind of abrupt over here. Let's taper that off a little bit more. I never know how long, um, how many kind of cycles I'll have to do. I think it depends too sometimes that like how arid is it how fast is this ink drying up? Um, because it seems, I feel like I'm getting this a little bit faster this time around, especially because I haven't done it in months. Or I don't know. It's been a really long time. I've been, really been doing a lot more of the, uh, uh, the printable vinyls, so yeah. The black from the top looks like the, a bayou. Should do a bayou scene, Ginger. That'd be cool with those uh, tones like that. I'm thinking of a uh, whenever I think of that bayou, I'm thinking about that uh, beginning of the. Uh, I love the you know, like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Even like the just the right in the beginning when you're going through the bayou and it's quiet and you know you hear this kind of little music playing and it's um, crickets. And you get that backdrop in the background. All right, so, uh, okay, so this is what I mean right here. We added and then we subtracted, uh, subtracted, and I'm adding again. I might be going with a little bit of a lighter touch and more of a drier application of this too. Okay. Um, and what that that's doing is it's kind of tapering these reverse streaks in here. So some of those reverse streaks in there are going from like a, a straight uniform streak to a little bit more of a darker one. But I'm not removing the streak altogether. It's just getting a little bit of tone laid over the top of it. Okay. All right. Something like that. And then we want to um, kind of, uh, that looks really fun. Um, see, I get distracted looking at these uh, things. They're kind of mesmerizing. Uh, we want to we wanna close off the top a little bit more. Okay, so I am going with, uh, especially the four corners, um, going with a darker tone like this. Okay, and I want it kind of rounded like this in general. So... Um, so as to kind of eradicate these hard, you know, 90 degree angles. It, it, that's with all my scenes. That's why I put things in kind of in a vignette around there. So it doesn't look so, um, harsh, um, with the hard angles on the edge of our cards, you know, I, I, I as I say that, I keep thinking I, I need to do more like ovals and, uh, rounds. I was mentioning that, um, before. I'm going to have my wife trim me out some rounds and ovals on that wood grain paper, I think. I think that'd be really cool. All okay, I'm going to splatter paint some stars up here too, so um, they'll stand out really well against kind of a darker background in here too. Okay, let's take a look at it. We'll see if we need more streaking and application of tone in there again, but... I think that looks pretty good like that. Okay. 
Now I have a lot of really strong lights in here um, in my studio like this. So that's really light like that. But I think, you know, in a normal lighting, um, like on our desks or something like that, it'll look like, you know, more like this. See, I'm kind of tilting this up away from the, uh, you know, these harsh lights that I have in here. So you'll see more of like that type look. Always like that type of thing. I forgot forgot about that. But look at the the shadow in there. You know, it's like a like a lava lamp or something. <laughs> All right. So I think I got it. I I thought I I thought it would take a couple more. You know, um, whatever um, cycles or something like that. Okay, let's get some of those additional stars in here, and let's do that right now. I'm really anxious to get that. Um, lookout tower in there stamped but i think we want to lay down the stars first so that we stamp over the top of it with the tower and the tower will cover any stars that are kind of stragglers in this area i think let's see yeah canada i think i think it used to be easier in canada for certain things um, if I'm not mistaken, I know that's the case for like areas that are even harder, Australia, New Zealand or something like that. Like just, I mean, some of the, some, you know, the most, what used to be real basic stuff, you know, glossy cardstock, um, you know, that was never a problem, um, like in the nineties or something like that. And I always say it because that was one of the main, you know, and very few accessories, you know, that people would be using, you know, pens, pads, Tombow pens, whatever, um, and matte and glossy cardstock. And stores would always carry it um, in different size packs. Um, I don't, I don't know where all that type of stuff went or where they got it from and if it's harder to get now for I, you know like the printing industry used to be so much bigger too so okay so let's go with these stars okay so this tower is going to go in here I'm going to I think see how there's a slope like this I'm going to reiterate that kind of slope like this with the stars like it's a milky way if you just kind of splatter paint in general it looks good too but I think when you give it a little bit of direction, you add in a little bit of um, kind of directional dynamics. Anytime you have diagonals in a composition, it kind of adds to the visual motion of a piece. You know, not that everything has to be, you know, have movement like that, but I think on this one, it'll be good. So I'm just going down here, like, let me see if you can see that. So I'm just releasing a couple hairs at a time. And I never go like, down here. I'm just releasing a couple, then I go back up here with my thumb and I, you know, release a couple like that. So see this right here? So it's really controlled. Um, not that everything has to be controlled, either is better. Um, for me, I don't know, that's usually what I'm going for though. Alright, so and I always kind of overdo it with the stars anyways, too, because they're like super fun to apply like that. Okay, now um, let's go over a couple out there. That's looking really bare, but I don't want to apply as much, you know, so as to emphasize that. And let's go a little bit down here, too. All right. So that's where things like really start... Um, kind of coming together and having fun uh, with the piece. It's just a different textural layer on there. So you get that, okay, see that right there. And you get the benefit of the holographic, how it really changes character based on the angle and lighting that's hitting it. That's a, kind of a cool one right there, like that. I'm like a kid, you know, with these things like that. I really like uh, seeing these different patterns and things like that. And see, 
and that's where that block out comes in handy down here. You don't have the that type of movement happening within the rocks. But again, you can probably see some a little bit of color coming through those rocks like that. And that's what it would be kind of indicative of, uh, you know, this type of light reflecting off of the rocks. So if you get a little bit of it showing through, I could have let a little bit more of it shown, you know, show through. Maybe that would have been better. But I think it's, you know, pretty cool as is like that. I just saw, I think I saw, oh, look at me. I think that's me. It's evil me in there. <laughs> I think that's, I think that was a reflection of me in there, I guess. Or maybe that was good me and I'm the evil one. Okay, let me see. Uh, Ontario, a lot of the stores. Yeah, there used to be a ton of stores in Ontario. Things shipped from Canada and UK. Hello, Christine. Does your wife do any stamping? Yeah, she's a, she's a stamper, scrapbooker, card maker. Um, she has like all the equipment too, you know, it's like two cricket machines and, uh, scan and cut. Does anyone remember that first, um, kind of, uh, trimmer thing? There was this other machine that came out. I think it was the first one. I'm talking about like probably 12 years ago or more. I was asking her about that machine recently. I said, uh, did you ever use that? She says, no, yeah, she's, uh, or she did, but she says it was really hard to use because you, you had to like program it or something like that. Um, but I want to use, I think I might use her, I keep saying this, but I haven't gotten around it. I think I might use her scan and cut. Because there's certain things that I want it to, um, I'd like to have three dimensional. I keep mentioning this, like the, the fences, um, specifically, I want the fences, um, cut out so that I can have them kind of popped up a little bit, um, off of a, a foreground. Oh, we're always trying to make things look, you know, reasonably three dimensional, not always, but, um, a lot of times it's, you know, in stamping. And it'd be nice to just have things actually three-dimensional. So we've been playing around with those types of things a little bit more over the last um, few months, I would say. Uh, you know, like that the, uh, um, you know, the hidden door Halloween cards or something like that. Or hey, what, what all, you know, what other three-dimensional things have we done? I don't know. For me, it was just, I mean, I don't know if it's 3D, but it's embossing, you know, Stuff like that. I should experiment around. I'm holding this down a really long time because I really want that lot that ink to transfer. I don't want this to be coming out like see through, you know, at this point in time. After laying down everything on here, I don't have a. I'm not using a stamp positioner here too. So, oh, okay, got that. There still is, you know, a pretty decent amount of ink on here. I'll show you. It looks like there's a decent amount, you know. So stamp and hold a little bit. I don't know, you know, maybe stays on would work good. I'm not sure. Okay, let's see, let's look at that. I was going to put, I think I want those windows in white. You know what I mean? Like someone's manning that tower um, at nighttime. But having those that color in those windows looks pretty cool too. Yeah, I think I want it to stand out more. Uh, so maybe I'll use um, a little bit of a warmer tone in those windows like that. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's add um, a little bit more foreground in here. Boy, I hope I can get a good impression in here um, with these trees like this. Sometimes when you go with those really dark images like this that are real solid and you're doing it on this type of 
non-porous paper, you know, we can hold this down for a while and then we lift off and like a vacuum, it just comes right off, um, you know, or drags a lot of that um, ink with it. So but let's give it a shot. Maybe I should go with a kind of a lighter one than this real solid spruce large, but I don't know, that spruce large would be really nice and visually heavy and anchor down this entire scene really well. You know, you can you can go with more than one tree too, but um, uh, I think this is the one to do it. I also have the pines and pines and rocks in there. But let's, let's give this a shot here. Speaking of um, Brilliance inks, I think people were ordering here in the U.S. Uh, some Brilliance inks from some um, online store in the U.K., and it was cheaper than buying it here. Or maybe it was Canada. I don't know. Was it you, Linda? I, now I'm thinking about it. Someone was um, ordering some, uh, I think it was the Brilliance pads. Oh, good night, Patty. The paper industry has changed so much, not just for crafting, but in general, it's printing, the printing industry, the paper industry, you know, really catered to uh, the printing industry. And there's just a lot less printing being done. Catalogs, um, books, textbooks, you know, a lot of it's gone digital. And then a lot of the um, printing's probably been consolidated. I mean, there were some pretty significant printers just in, you know, close to where I lived for a long time. Um, a big four or five color press type of um, printing place. And it was, uh, I didn't even know about it, but we took a field trip in college and um, they were printing uh, like the latest Ansel Adams um, calendars for the next year. The, uh, I think the car and driver covers were printing. Um, at that time I saw them coming off the press and uh, that was just in Orange County, California. And I bet you anything that place is gone. It was card called Gardner Litho, you know, Gardner Lithography. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if those types of places are around, you know, just less magazines, you know, just print things. I mean, think about newspapers too. Okay, so has this been, whole, you know, have my home down long enough? Let's see. There is a big blotch right here. It, it, um, it resisted, that rock resisted, and then it smeared it all like that. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do about that though. So that happens, see this, it's like a 50 cent piece um, area like that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go in with this top right here, and we'll just create another two trees down here, and I think that'll cover it okay. It'll put it like in the foreground like that. Let's see if it resists it again, but that's kind of an interesting little thing like that. So that's the type of thing that I'm not, you know, uh, quite sure what's going to happen sometimes when we're dealing with wet media, and we're going over the top of it with more wet media. You know, I don't know if it's gonna vacuum off or whatever. And like I said, it's different, you know, depending on so I'm going to be in Arizona this next weekend, and it might be more arid out there, where if I did the same type of process, it would have been fine. I'm not sure. The black streaks at the top, Christine, um, whereas I laid down some inks a little bit, and then I blew the top of it, and it like blew some of that ink down. Though I'm just joking. Um, we laid it down with a cotton ball, okay? And it was with the Brilliance water-based ink, okay? Now that's still wet up there, okay? And we'll have to spray seal it. And then um, that applied a little bit, but not great. 
Um, let's leave that line here. Let's go in with this other one right here. Um, I was going to use a couple of different things. And then what I did was I took a paintbrush like this because that ink up there is wet. And then we streaked back up there like that. Okay. And we got that real feathery looking type of look. You see those little fibers like that. But then it comes out rough. So what you do is you you go back in there again with some more of this. And then you apply very lightly over the top of it like that. Now sometimes then you do it again and then you come back in again with that until you get it right. Okay. So that's one of those things. Don't think about it like a like a straight line type of um, process. Think about it like a like a circular process where you just keep doing it until you get those streaks like you want it. Now, so, like I said, sometimes when I do those streaks like that, it, they're too harsh. So I darken them in up there so it becomes like a, a lighter streak and a darker one up top there where it tapers off like that. So I want it tapering positively dark to light down here. But in the lighter areas, I want it tapered from light to dark. So dark to light in the dark areas and then light to dark in these areas. And that's where people you know, might think it's kind of clunky if they don't think of it as a kind of a circular process where you just keep, you know, you can manipulate it. Um, you can keep manipulating it until you get it right. And if you don't like something altogether, then you just take some black ink and put it right over the top of it again, and then just streak right back into it. Um, so a lot of times, it t I don't know, a lot of times, I think I usually do it like three or four times usually, but um, I got it in add, subtract, add. So just like three steps on that one. Okay, let's add in this right here. This is my leafless pine stamp like this one. This one's the larger one for this really large thing. That right there got a little clunky. But let's add this. I'm not looking to cover that up, okay? I'm going to add this right in here somewhere. Maybe that's too big. Now that I look at it. Um, oh, let, me, let me find my smaller or medium version of this one. Hopefully I can find this real fast. Okay, so that's that's one of the benefits of um, working in this style. So, I, so like I said in my description, um, I've used the printable vinyl sticker paper um, a lot over this past, I don't know, whatever year or something like that. And it's a little bit more traditional. You're stamping on something, it sticks to the paper, you're done, you move on, right? And this one, it's all of this is still wet on here. So, you know, it's kind of weird because, you know, if I touch that, it's going to come right off and we can keep, you know, adding things. And it's um, at any point, if you're adding something over the top of something else, you, you know, you might be adding, but you might equally be removing um, what's already been laid down there. Um, but on the other hand, you can do these streaks like this, and you can't do that on something like a printable vinyl because once you lay the media down, it's set. So it's really fun playing around this way. You just got you got to get used to it. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a weird kind of process, but as long as you know that going into it, um, you know, just know that uh, you know it's going to be a little bit of a different feel uh, process. You know. Um, when you do it. Now, so you have to be careful like, right here because if I lay this down here, I don't want to remove all that down there. So I'm going to go like this. And I want this leafless pine coming up from behind there. And I'll do another one like in the foreground probably. So I'm trying to use my pressure up there. Okay. I missed right there. Um, I have a little bit of space. I'll add it in with a pen or something like that. This looks like, uh, this reminds me of Taki's Peak, right? Um, 
I've been hiking a lot of times. There was a fire <laughs> right next to the fire lookout tower a few years ago, and uh, it got right up to the tower. The tower is still there, but the um, entire side of the mountain's like charred. It was so depressing to see. Okay, now that one right there, I got a little bit of that tree in there, but where I went down there in this darker black, it almost gave me a reverse impression. It like removed on the tops of some of those branches some ink. So, okay, I, I, okay, I totally forgot about this too. If you lay down a bunch of tone like this too, I forgot that if you take a clean stamp and you stamp into it and you remove it, you're gonna do it. You're gonna leave a reverse impression in there, which is a kind of a cool technique as well. I haven't done that for a while. Okay, let me see. Let me see here. I'm reading your comments or the comments here. Someone in Australia selling brilliance on eBay. That's interesting. All right. Um, I was going to put this tree, but now that I see this kind of reverse type of thing, I'm going to go with something a little bit lighter um, in this foreground. Let me see if I can get a, uh, an impression laid down as opposed to a like a reverse impression. Okay, so this area right in here is a little bit murky, okay, in terms of uh, like definition. I was going to put like another like solid tree down here, but I don't think I should do that. So let's go with um, something a little bit more. We'll get our, for our, our foreground in here, but I don't think I'm going to remove any, be removing anything. And see, this is like my go-to spot right here, because if I hold my card on the edges, I'm going to be removing that ink out there. I like that green like that right there. Okay, so let's see if I can get some good impressions here. I'm trying to use a little bit less pressure here too, maybe. All right, I think that worked out pretty good. Like that, okay. So get that right there. That looks like it's kind of raised um, from the background. All right. Um, let me see, is this gel pen working? Yeah. Let's see if I can get this little tree, see that little gap in between that area right there? Let's just go down here like this. I can see this this other tree down here um, did a little bit of a reverse uh, mark. And right here, here's like a little open space within that um, spruce tree. It's where there was a little pocket of air in there, or it vacuumed off, um, you know, the surface like that. So we're going to just go, and that's lar a large enough area where I'm just going to fill it in with some additional ink, okay? I guess. All right. Okay, now, as I said before, as you tap this in, you got to make, make sure that you're not removing ink, you know, which is entirely um, possible to do. So uh, play around with your, your different pressures um, of application and maybe the amount of ink that you have on here. But if you have a little bit more of a drier, um, if your applicator is drier than the area that you're applying it on, it could get a little, it, you could be doing more of a reverse um, type of mark. Okay, now let me get, put this a little bit more in shadow down at the base here too. Okay, now all of this, that looks like it really stands out, but that's going to dry. See, that's what it looks like 
moist and that's what it looks like flat so that'll merge in more when that dries this is like dry black ink over here and you can see it's a little bit more grayish like 80 percent gray and that's what it looks like 100 percent i mean or wet it looks more like 100 percent black so don't worry about that allow it to dry um and you know, you'll see what color it is and then also when you spray seal this too a lot of this i think gets darker when you seal it too so it'll be somewhere in between this and what it looks like you know when it's been freshly applied and wet okay all right let me add a little bit more around here too i'm kind of tinting a little bit of those stars up there where they look a little bit more gray where I apply some of this just for a little bit of variation. There, see what I just did right there. I just touched that area and, um, you know, that ink um, came off. So you'll get a lot of fingerprinty types of things, I, you know, usually when you're doing this. <sighs> All right, now let's go in and get that those windows done Bill has a couple of pads with no reinkers but the shipping is ridiculous now what colors do you have Bill I thought you were going to bed Bill hello Rhonda you got that uh, that streaking the streaking process down, uh, Christine. <laughs> the streaks are the things, right? We want those nice and graceful. She said, remember, you know, when I first started doing this, I think I was like going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, the thing for me is I didn't have enough of that black in there because I was kind of thinking about these streaks in here, okay? So I didn't apply enough black. So you have to overdo the black in order to, you know, have these streaks, reverse streaks, visible. Don't now, you know, you don't slather it in there. Kind of get the gist of it with these fingery types of things in here, okay? But encroach on the light area a little bit more than you would think, you know, because you want to have these streaks showing up. And if there's, you know, if there's no ink laid down, then these, you know, those brush strokey streaks won't show up and i i think that's the that's the thing where you add in that kind of more graceful um type of uh um i don't know whatever lighting i guess you know those light streaks okay now this is really going it probably really going to change the spirit of this thing Anytime you do that lighting on the interior of structures, um, it can really stand out a lot. So um, now's the time to you know decide if you want to do it or not. <laughs> uh, because this one, you know, if I don't want it afterwards, it's a little bit harder to remove. Um, the paint pens really, um, you know, the, you can apply these paint pens and they'll stick to anything. You can, you can use an acrylic paint pen on glass and it will, um, apply and adhere to it. Usually I say that and I thought, I don't know, someone told me that they applied it on something and it didn't stick, which I was really shocked of because you can... As far as I know, you can apply it on just about anything, and it really sticks quite well on one of the uh, the boxes one time. I thought it was crazy, but they had, it was like metal, glass, paper, skin. <laughs> what do you mean, like skin? All right, see that right there? You can't even see it like that, but here it is. You know, the benefit of the uh, holographic paper. It changes the time of day, you know, on there. I think that I think that interior illumination looks really good. So, you know, like that, can't really tell. And I think that tower looks like far more interesting now. 
you know, with any degree of kind of darkness in there. You know what I mean? It stands out from the background a little bit more. And it also looks occupied like that too. Okay, now see this, um, these starry types of things like that. Okay, so we have a lot of different um, colors up in the um, sky area. So why don't we, um, you know, uh, let's play around with some different colors in here. Since we're using holographic um, colors and there's all colors of the rainbow, why not use, I don't know, some different colors in here. Let's go with like a blue, you know, you can add red or orange up there if you want to. Um, there's that pink. So how about, how about like a violet? I think that would be kind of cool up there. So you can kind of emphasize, I don't know, that's reflecting, but that little streak like there looks pretty cool too. Um, I'm looking at it at a certain angle. Let me see if I could show you. And I'm trying to, there's this aqua green that I can see from my, oh, there it was. I can't get it here. All right, so here's a little bit of purple. I almost went this way. I forget the, you know, the, um, the Milky Way is going this way. I think before too, sometimes in this darker area, I did like a reverse impression, like a, you know, a word stamp piece or I don't know, whatever. And that looks pretty cool. It, I think it would be better if I had like a really strong white ink and you can stamp it up there. You know, if there's enough like white stars, it would kind of blend and harmonize pretty well. I put my fingerprint right there. Can you see it? It's going to happen to you. Um, I taught a class where we were doing, um, I think where we were using this paper. Um, I don't remember when that was. Was it that class or was it? Am I, 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 I think it was just foils in general. Okay. And I just told them ahead of time, hey, expect, you know, a lot of fingerprinty types of things. And, you know, you're going to be removing ink and just, you know, I always like to cover that, you know, just uh, right in the beginning. And so people aren't, um, you know, like, uh, you know, troubled by it or something like that or shocked, you know, when we get around to it. And sometimes when you do that, it, it, I don't know, it, it doesn't happen too, too. So, um, I don't know. Okay, so I added some of those, that little patchy area to cover up my fingerprint. And I'm just going back in, and then you just add your stars right. Ah, gosh darn it! I put my finger right there, and I just scratched across there like that, and it scratched across a little bit of that area right there. So see, this is what I'm talking about. I I do think it's worth it though, you know, from the end result. And remember, we're just going to let this dry, and it will dry, and then you just spray seal, and you don't have to worry about scratching it at that point in time. But one of the nice things about this is that it is manipulable. It, be, you know, we can manipulate it um, and keep changing things up as we see fit. Okay, so here's a few more larger stars like that to really emphasize that kind of arc like that. I should put Cassiopeia up there somewhere, right, right in that Milky Way. Look at that, like that. Isn't that fun? That's the benefit of the, uh, you know, one of the benefits of the, uh, of this type of um, cardstock, as opposed to the printable vinyl. I love the printable vinyl though too. You know what I mean? If, it, if I'm teaching a class, you know, I'll probably go with the printable vinyl because it accepts inks and everything like that in a very traditional sense, and everything's like really locked down, like immediately after stamping. Okay, now do you see? I blocked off this area down here with the white ink before I stamped these rocks over the top of it, but do you see that little area of white ink there? Let me, I can't get it here. Let me see. There it is right there. See that right there? Now that was the first thing I did. And that was like a, I don't know what it was like, a, 
40 minutes ago or whatever. So I'm just going to go in here. And it's completely dry, I can see. I'm being careful not to... I don't want to get too close where I'm going to be wiping off the black imagery, but... Yeah, I just wiped off a decent amount of it. There's still a little bit there. Now, let me see if I have a Q-tip here. You have your, if you had like a Q-tip or something like that. Here, I'll just make it here. I'll just go like that. And then you can go in here. A more detailed uh, removal tool here. Like that. And... Uh, I remove that. I just touched that right there. <laughs> I hope this doesn't turn people off to doing this, you know, these little things that keep, you know, removing like that. Like I said, you know, if you lock it down, it'll be fine like that. All right. So a couple more things here and then a couple more elements and that'll be it. Um, the, hello, Jen. I don't know if I said hello to you. Hello, sweetie. It's a bird. Um, if I get a, an inadvertent smudge like you did on the rocks, I get so discouraged, but you know just how to recover. Hey, you know, smudges, there's going to be smudges in life. We just gotta, you know, we just gotta, we just gotta ink them over. <laughs> I just saw a little fingerprint there. In in scenic stamping too, you remember it's all about layering anyway, and just a lot of times it you know it can make it even look better. All right, so it'd probably be a good idea to um, allow this to dry and to spray seal it before doing this. Okay, I'm going to add in a few extra little sparkly stars here um, just because we're in a live stream and I want to add all elements in here right now okay let's see let me take a gander here let's go with a couple let's go with a couple right right up here maybe let's see okay The big challenge here is um, seeing where you added this glue dot. Why is my glue not flowing? Is this not? I think it might be clogged from the inside. I might have to poke a hole from the inside. Okay, that should have done it, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. I cluster a couple of them together and then have a couple little stragglers here and there. Let's put one out here too. All right, I didn't count how many I just had, but hopefully I'll, I can see them. I can find my paints now. I have that little organizer or my uh, glue and everything. Okay, great. Let's go with I put a big glue dot, but um, I'm going to stick with a couple of these smaller ones here. Ow! Oh my gosh, it dropped and it dropped right in the glue. Oh, good. Hey, that glue made it easier for me to flip that over, though. It's like a glue barrier. Oh, wait, that's not, that's not a piece of glue. That's just my larger... Um, gel pen dot, I think. Okay. And where did that one go? That was isolated. Is that it right there? You guys are probably watching you're saying, eh, no, it was to the left. <laughs> I 
Let me see here. Oh, okay, it's right there. There we go. Okay, here's one more, I think. That. One, two, three, five, seven. Did I do seven glue dots? So I touched there again and it removed, so you just kind of go over it again like that. Just cover up your fingerprints if you get them on there. Or leave them in there, you know what I mean? It'll show that it's uh, it's handmade, you have proof, it's got your own fingerprint identification on there. <laughs> right, obviously, I'm not going to do anything as far as um, matting this up right now because I just removed the ink. So for me, this is going to be dry. I mean, like I said, you know, when I started stamping this, I can tell that ink is dry right there. It's not it's not affixed, but um, I think you can spray seal this probably at any point in time. I'm guessing that it'd be fine to do it even before it's not... Um, dry and it'll fix it but i think probably it's probably best to um allow it to dry before spray sealing i don't know why it, uh, that's what i would do if i'm using dye based inks or something like that and we want to go for a really big saturation sometimes i think it's better to do it before it dries and dulls out but on something like this um i don't know I, that would be my inclination to to allow it to dry before spray sealing. But uh, let's take a look at this right now. Oh, let me see if you can see those little twinklies at all. Eh, it's a little here. Can you see those little twinkly stars at all? It's moving a little bit. Oh, here we go. Just like one, two, three, four, and that one out there, and there's one down there. If I can get the right angle for you, like that it's more subtle. You know, especially with all this super reflective light like that. But um, here we go. Oh, that looks pretty good like that. Like on that horizon like that. If you go like that. And there's those light beams. Even when it's, when it's really subtle like that, that's kind of cool like that. Oh, there's that darker blue like that in there. But you can get pretty extreme with it like that. When I hold this too horizontal, it's picking up too many of my lights in here. But um, anyway, that was really fun. I haven't used this uh, type of paper in a long time. So again, if you just joined in, this is a holographic cardstock. It's not the holographic printable vinyl, which is a, a cool type of paper to work with as well. You can't really get those streaks, though, um, as far as I know, using um, the printable vinyl because if I just touch that printable vinyl with this ink, it's it's stuck there and it's almost dry instantly, okay? Which is, you know, one of the benefits of working with it. Um, but with something like this, if you're going for those streaks, I think the streaks are kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they're the, I guess they're, I guess the paper is the star of the scene. But then maybe secondary are those, you know, those, darker streaks like that to, you know, to get those curtains going like that. I don't know, maybe the tower is probably a stronger focal point, but if anyone looks at this, they're going to be looking at that northern light type of thing, I think. You know, you can see it from a distance, you know, no problem like that, but a lot of movement in the sky. And, uh, and if you don't get those streaks down, like, you know, it, whatever, like super graceful and tapered and everything like that, that paper is so loud in the background anyway, you know what I mean? Um, it, I don't think it's going to matter that much, okay? So don't, uh, I wouldn't sweat it, you know what I mean? And you might be kind of fighting this uh, process, you know what I mean? If, you, if it's the first time you've done it too. But just remember, it's, it's one of those things that kind of makes it kind of weird to do, but it also in it, invariably makes it kind of the most... Um, user-friendly of any type of media service combination that you can be using. Not just, not just the, uh, I'm talking about like foil card stocks in general. If you're using something like these brilliant zincs on the top of it, because you can just wipe it off if you need to or whatever, um, you know, to 
reset an area or just start over. Okay. So um, it's really fun that way. Look at those colors like that. Look at that weird kind of ripply thing like that too. Looks really uh, kind of uh, celestial or something like that too. That's really fun. Is anyone having not like a hard time um, falling asleep? Okay, so look at this. Um, you feel your uh, eyelids are getting heavy. Um, you're completely relaxed. <laughs> at the count of uh, at the countdown of uh, whatever ten, you will be uh, completely asleep. <laughs> That's really fun like that. Someone should do like a like a like a little box um one of those little like shadow boxes things you know with like a little LED behind this and I would cut out those windows like that. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, you do a little shallow shadow box or something. You'd have to lay this down on something nice and stiff. And then you can have those lights coming like through those um windows like that. Actual light, I think that'd be really cool. But even without it, you know, I mean, it's like you get the light show of just the paper itself and you can have like, you know, those things in there. Or I don't know if someone has like glow in the dark paint or something like that, that's really reactive and you can charge that up and someone can turn off the lights or something like that. And you'd have those windows kind of glowing, which would be kind of cool, too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. Holographic papers, they're fun, aren't they, Linda? It was it was this brilliant zinc that really uh, opened up the doors for me as far as um, using the use of foils and stuff like that. Oh, here's that stamp that I was thinking about. I was thinking maybe this one would have been a better one to go with, you know, when I saw that. But like I said, you just kind of fill it in. So yeah, the brilliant zinc really opened up some uh, quite a few doors in terms of... Uh, you know, some kind of ink having the ability to um, both dry on, um, you know, a, a non-porous surface and um, and to be able to manipulate it as well. So I like that. And then we got into the, uh, you know, the, the printable vinyls where you can't manipulate it, but you can certainly stamp on it, you know, with, you know, a myriad of different types of inks, you know from water-based here to solvent to oil-based pigment inks, you know, and this is, again, this is the printable vinyl. This is the holographic cardstock, you know, so it's almost like the, you know, you know, the polar extremes. I don't know if it's the polar extremes, but it's different in terms of uh, being able to manipulate it. So a little bit more dynamic and uh, saturated in terms of the tones, again, because this one's a little bit more you know, coated with that, um, I think it's emulsion, you know, so it's not quite as dynamic, but again, this might change a little bit too. Once we spray seal it, it might not be quite as intense because it gives it a little bit more of a slightly frosted coating on top, but I don't know. It's a fun process to, uh, to do. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It has a different feel to it. It's like a tactile kind of experience, you know, a little bit, you know what I mean? We when you're touching it and stuff like that and it's removing it. But again, remember that that's, if you think about it as one of the benefits of it too, because you can change, you know, something that you don't like and remove it completely. And if you ever have to do that on one of them, it's like, oh, okay, you know, that's that's a good thing, you know what I mean? For the most part, it's kind of bad, you know, in some ways if I get something that I want just right, but in order to get something just right, that's it has to have those properties like that, you know, being able to do those real kind of light streaky things back into it with, a you know, something as soft as something like this. So, you know what I mean? It's uh, really fun to do. So you can do this. Okay, so it's not just that type of holographic card stocks. It's, you know, it's the silver... Um, card stocks. It's the gold ones that you can do this with. I mean, this is a different type of uh, holographic here, but, you know, you can certainly do it on something like this. Um, again, these are not, like, printable, you know, types of things like that. So 
Um, you can do that process on any type of, uh, well, I don't know about any type of, but probably, you know, any, uh, you know, most non-porous surfaces like that. And again, remember, this is, uh, it's the, uh, it's the brilliant sink, so it'll dry on there. I don't, I don't know if, uh, like a VersaFine Claire oil-based one, um, will ever dry for me on this type of cardstock. Okay, and even if you spray seal it, I don't think it'll dry. But that being said, like I said, I'll be in um, Arizona next week, and uh, that arid air out there and just the extremes of uh, whatever relative humidity um, really uh, shocked me, you know, I don't know, whatever, th two or three years ago, pre-pandemic. I haven't been back out there um, but um, and there were certain things that could be done uh, out there that I can't do in Southern California. So anyways, you're getting sleepy, Jeannie. <laughs> Thanks, Ginger. I'm glad you like it. It's fun to do. I like this little color right here at this angle like this. So you can really see that deep green up there uh, right up in that feathery, feathered kind of tapered area. That's what I really like about that. So, anyway. Your videos, Kevin, only keep me alert and sleepless. We're gonna have a, a video challenge here sometime, Linda. See how long uh, you can stay awake <laughs> while watching, uh, you know, uh, whatever the Stampscape channel. We'll have a marathon thing. Jeannie's in bed. And for her time right now, 7.05. Man, it is completely pitched. Looks like we almost, we're getting close. To, I don't know when the full moon is. We're probably like a day or two away or maybe a day. I'm looking out my window right now. There's a big moon out there right now. I just got some Jacquard water-based pigment inks. Uh, do I know that line? I don't know if I, I don't know that line. That sounds pretty cool. They have 21 colors going to give them a try. Jacquard water-based pigment ink. So I'm going to look those up, Bonnie. That'd be interesting if you can use um, other colors on there. Okay, so, the, you know, that being said, I, I, I've i never, I don't have other colors of Brilliance inks other than black, white, silver, and gold and uh i don't know i have seen some other colors on there that would be pretty interesting on these types of surfaces i tend not to use them though because i think they start discontinuing them and i don't want to get media that's you know going to be discontinued so i pray that they never discontinue black and white brilliant sinks because there is just for doing this, I don't think there's anything else that can be used. I don't know, maybe the jackards, I don't know, Bonnie, you know, let us know um, if those work. Um, I don't know, I, maybe I should pick up a pad. I, I haven't heard of uh, those types of water-based pingu. One thing about the Brilliance pads too, um, they made these to be quick drying, not on something like this, but um, although, you know, it's some of this, I think that's dry now because it looks a little bit flatter to me. But they made this to be quick drying. So that's relatively speaking, though. It's like when you stamp it on a piece of glossy cardstock. Glossy cardstock's porous, okay? This is a lot more non-porous than like a glossy cardstock. So like I said, um, different types of oil-based pigment inks went dry on glossy cardstock back in the day. So they made that one or those types, that entire line, to be able to draw in glossy cardstock because people weren't using foils and stuff like that. I don't know if they were even around, you know, 2000, or I don't know whenever they came out, you know, 20 some odd years ago. So, yeah, I'm not sure. They bought out color box. They call them color pads. Wait a minute, what? The Jacquard um, bought color box? And they call them color pets. Well, the color box ones were oil based, though, weren't they? These ones are Sukaneko. Um, I thought, 
I thought Colorbox. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, they bought out Colorbox or they bought out ClearSnap? ClearSnap. Colorbox was the line within ClearSnap. But the, I, I thought those ones were all um, oil based pigment inks. I don't know. You say they're water based. Uh, let us know about that. I want to I wanna see. Uh, so if anyone just logged on, look at this type of thing. Isn't that cool? See my shadows right here and how those different colors are like that. It always uh, is wild to me like that. Seeing, you know, there's a different shadows on there. Look at that green like that. It's like magic. <laughs> I don't know what's happening right there. Is that just the green and look at this. Here's like two different. Uh, so I'm blocking off from two different angles and there's like different colors on there. So I don't know. You can have some sort of um, thing where it's like rotating or something like that. And you have all these different colors like you know, from the uh, the northern lights kind of changing or something like that. It'd be kind of interesting. So anyway, all right, folks. Thanks so much for joining in on this uh, piece of foil cardstock. I had really f a really fun time experimenting with it again. It's been a while, um, I think, since I've done that. Like I said, again, I've been using much more of a kind of faster process types of... Uh, you know, incarnations of it in the uh, the printable vinyls, but um, I don't know. That looks. This is really fun to do. It's kind of a fun little um, I don't know process like that. The thing I don't like is you know when you have it done like this and you're touching the sides, you know. You know but it you know it's not hard to just go back in there and add a little bit of a uh, you know ink right back over the top of it. So um, I don't know. Small price to pay in terms of uh, for the. Uh, you know, kind of the results that you can get sometimes from it. So, and look at all those different colors like that. But like I said, you know, it's in the, uh, oh, so if anyone um, is interested, look at um, the, um, if you type in like stampscapes, holographic, and then you can type in something like reverse impressions, you'll see some types of things like this, but I fill in more with the black and then I go in like with whatever pine trees or something like that and stamp with a dry clean stamp into this ink while it's wet and then you remove it and then you get that holographic kind of look in a reverse impression you know where you're removing ink and that's pretty fun to do too so there's different types of things i i, I tend to look at that as like that soot stamping type of um process where people would soot their cards using you know one of those oil-based um candles or uh what do you call lanterns or something like that? And then they would stamp into it with a clean stamp and then you remove it and you get that reverse impression and it would look like a real antique type of look. This is the same type of process. It's not gonna give you an antique look with that holographic, but it's, um, you know, it's a really fun uh, type of uh, process to do. So I don't know, give that a try. All right, thanks everyone. Hope to see you in the next live whenever that is. It won't be next Friday because I'll be in uh, Mesa, Arizona. Come on out if you're in the area and uh, come on by the uh, the booth. <laughs> it won't be Stampscapes. It'll be um, uh, Rubber Stamp Depot's booth and I'll have a small little section within that space. So anyways, could be my last convention ever. But that being said, I thought my last convention was really like 13 years ago or something like that before I kind of teamed up with the uh, rubber stamp uh, depot and that uh, solved a lot of the logistical issues. <laughs> All right, everyone. Good night. Sleep well. I hope you have a great uh, weekend. Uh, uh, did I say hello to Melissa? Hello, Melissa, if you're in there uh, still. Anyway, good night, everyone.